<laughs> I know it's late. <laughs> All right, how's it going, everybody? Did you like the uh, debunking video? What's weird is the person that said all that crap uh, about, oh my God, look at that, there's a person there. They said, oh yeah, well, maybe he's right, maybe he's right. Um, Cheyenne's video was a little bit before, you know, it, she still doesn't realize that what I'm saying is, is that that's not Cheyenne's image at all. It's from an article. That, that's kind of the key point of the whole thing. Hey, look at that. It's Carol. Look at the flowers. Referring back to The Walking Dead, where Carol told one of the uh, young sisters who seemed to be a sociopath and, and not curable, she basically put her out of her misery. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What is that one um shugging? What does shugging mean? On on like Denise's image there. I'm never sure what that one means. I see these little hands. Are they like It looks happy. <laughs> I've never been able to understand what the hell that is though, to be honest with you. Hey, it's Kit Kat bar. I'm, I'm, I apologize, I had a Snickers today. I did look at the Kit Kat, the dark chocolate one, but I just, I couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, she was never really wanting anybody to look at the flowers, yep. Oh, is that that is? Oh. <laughs> well, cool. Hug back. Hug back. Yeah, I always thought it was somebody, like, creeping up to, um, like, the edge of the counter, and they're like, yeah, you yeah. know, like they're really happy to watch something. So, wow, I was totally off. Hey, look at that. It's Billy Boy Blue, who needed the money, as he said in the previous show earlier today. Although, he said, I needed the money. But as we know, Billy Boy Blue is Hughes the joke. Gray in the mm -hmm. house. Yeah. Thanks, Billy Boy Blue. You know, I was looking uh, at up some cold cases earlier in the evening, and I uh, came across some in uh, New Hampshire. Hey, wow! Thanks again, Carol. Look at the flowers. Yeah, well, I'm glad I can be me. <laughs> Some people hate me, but uh, it's just, it is what it is. I don't know how, let me, let me just tell you guys this. When I make those debunking videos and go over stuff like that, I don't have the ability to do it where I'm just really um, like, yeah, matter of fact, you know, just putting it. There has to be a little bit of ribbing and dissing of the original person because of the way their attitude is when you try to explain it to them without doing the video. Okay, and once you don't get through to that person and about 20 other people in a row, you then have to decide that, okay, now I've got to put a video out to uh, explain it to a mass number of people who seem to believe the other person. Right? And, it, and it comes down to this, people wanting to believe something. Okay, Not that it's, uh, it's true or anything. A lot of these people want to believe in something like that. Sort of like the Sandy Hook thing. Right? They want to believe it's a conspiracy, so every single thing that they're told 
they view through the lens of a conspiracy and then they start noticing things that aren't really indicative of that whatsoever. Wait, what are you saying, Gray? Are you saying Sandy Hook wasn't fake? Oh my God, I'm out of here. Well, good. Bye bye. Yeah, that's one of my. Uh, that's one of my. Uh, what I use for what do you call it? Uh, purge nights. I'll say, listen, if you believe Sandy Hook is fake, unsubscribe immediately. Okay. Because we're definitely not on the same wavelength. Yeah, I don't know. It's so weird because that same... Every single thing that I discussed today in that debunking video, I have discussed at other times two years ago. And it's amazing that it's still out there floating around. It's just, uh, it's mind-boggling, really. Scary. Scary stuff. And if it wasn't for the fact that, like, 50 people are all cheering it on, going, wow... And, and crying almost. I mean, they sound like, oh my God, I've got chills. Really? What do you have chills of? Okay, because you're not looking at a damn thing. I've got chills, everybody. Oh, oh. Let me guess. Billy Boy Blue, you believe Sandy Hook is fake. <laughs> Okay, everybody but you, Billy Boy Boy. Oh, wow, I was just looking at this this uh, map here. Can you see it? Look at there's an arm there, an arm there, and then two legs, and then sort of a, you know, it's missing the thighs, but of course, then these are two eyeballs, and then a, and then a chest area. Are your chills multiplying? No. But I am losing control. <laughs> oh, yeah. And by the way, people, uh, I was just watching. If you buy the Mavic Mini out there, uh, I'm saying this for Raven, it absolutely is no different than any other drone. The only thing you don't have to do is pay the $5. I just saw a video today and I was like, oh yeah, well that's kind of what it felt like anyways. You don't have to pay the $5 and register it. Other than that, you have to follow all the same laws, apparently in other states, uh, other countries I mean. Uh, it makes a big difference. That 250, 250 gram limit they set it to. Anyways, alright, let's go to the uh, cold cases here. Now, but before we get to all of those, look at this crazy one here. So I was looking up cold cases, and then this one came. It was actually, I was looking at New Hampshire, but this one came up out of California. And I, I'm, it was a California newspaper, but it was out of Houston, Texas. Look at this crazy story right here. This has to be some sort of a serial killer. I wonder what case this is part of. But it says the bodies of four teenage girls, two of them beheaded and two drowned, have been found during the last two weeks. And the county sheriff said Friday all four may have been killed by the same homicidal maniac. <clears throat> Back in 1991, they weren't really calling people serial killers. They always called them maniacs. The second headless torso was found and identified Friday. There's no doubt that we're dealing with a homicidal maniac who may be the same person or persons that killed the two Galveston girls, Harris County Sheriff C.V. Buster Kern said. The headless remains of uh, Colette Anise Wilson, 13, were, let's see, were found Friday near a reservoir less than 200 feet from where the decapitated body of Gloria Gonzalez, 19, was found Tuesday. So those are definitely related. If they're only 200 feet apart, similar deal. The Wilson girl was identified by her father. Oh, that must have sucked. A dentist who said he did all the dental work on the teeth in her lower jaw. He also said he recognized a ring found on the body. She disappeared June 17th while waiting for her mother to pick her up 
following band practice. Her band instructor dropped her off at a rural highway intersection where she was supposed to meet her mother. A young man hunting for buried treasure Tuesday found the torso. What does that mean? Buried treasure. Found the torso of the Gonzalez girl with a cord tied around her neck. The girl was reported missing October 28th. Her head and tooth were found 50 feet away. But investigators said the tooth did not match the other teeth in the skull. So they searched for a second victim. Jesus. The only part of the Wilson girl's head that was found was the lower jaw. Authorities figured animals carried off the rest of the skull. The bodies of two 15-year-old girls were found floating last week in a bayou south of Houston. The girls, Debbie Ackerman and Mary Johnson, were nude from the waist down. Their hands and their feet were bound, and they were both shot through the head. Witnesses said they saw the two girls get into a pickup truck the day they were killed. I mean, that, what a nightmare story that is. Hey, Trisha Kelly. <clears throat> I mean, that's just, uh, that, that, that one just sort of popped up on the side. I was reading something else, and my eye caught that story. I mean, this is 1971. I don't know whatever happened to this, you know, in this case here. I, I'd like to know if they caught the person, or did, they, did these end up being the victim of a serial killer? Um, if you guys want to look up on the side... Uh, like, this name should be pretty unique. Colette Anise Wilson. Yeah, let's, let, actually, let me just try that. Hold on. Hey, it's Sabrina Rodriguez. Thank you. That's not what I want. Jesus. Okay, so her name is, let me type it in over here. Um, where is that? Col Colette. Anise Wilson. Sabrina Rodriguez. Tonight on NBC. Gray is the true crime king. I love you, Gray. <laughs> well, thanks. It's always good to see Sabrina Rodriguez, one of my uh, more supportive uh, freaks out there. You know, since we're all freaks. Okay, so 1971, and then we'll say Houston, Texas. See, that's crazy, right? Why isn't it showing up? Her name's right there in that paper. Let's see, one more time. C-O-L-E-T-T-E-A-N. Yeah, Denise Wilson. 1971. How about this? I'll get rid of Houston. Oh, there we go. Now it came up with some uh, some articles here. <clears throat> uh, a combined force of sheriff's deputies, police officers, and firemen, led by a helicopter search crew, <clears throat> are combing the countryside around Alvin in search of a 13-year-old girl missing since about 12.30. So this is just the missing persons report here. 12.30 p.m. <laughs> Thanks again, Sabrina Rodriguez. Freak forever. It's a <laughs> pleasure to support you every month. Well, thank you very much. If I was rich, I'd give your channel more money. 
Well, that's very kind of you. So I'm trying to get a booth right now. I'm going to go. I'm going to CrimeCon, but I'm trying to figure out. You know, I'm trying to get my own booth in between Morph and Lorden, so we can sort of have the three minute of mystery together. I could have my own booth, and I want to do something where I'll even buy the electricity for my booth, and I want to stream and and internet i guess and i want to stream live the different there's a lot of people that go to crime con it's, it's actually pretty sad but humbling at the same time like wow you have a bunch of family members victims uh family members that walking around they ha usually have pamphlets they're just trying to get help and get the word out there so i want to have them come on and tell their story live while while we're there. Don't you think that'd be pretty cool? We sort of did that last year, and that's kind of what gave me the idea uh, when when we had uh, Kelsey on, and then she had uh, Turney on there. I think Sarah is her name. Sarah, I, I can't remember exactly what her. But yeah, I'd like to do that. So I'm waiting to hear back. From the person I just emailed them today. All right, that's right. Were you there last year, Erie Ferry? Yeah, it's usually last year it was um, Hallen, Lorden, then me, then Morph. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Trisha. They'd come on and then they'd be live on my channel and tell their story. Yeah, I mean, they, they would be on live as we go. <clears throat> and um, I'm not sure if I would do... What I could probably do is, yeah, have them come on, tell it, and then eventually download it and then make each person, unless there's time in between, I could probably make a different live for each one of them. With their own thumbnail and everything. Yeah. So this one, this one's weird here. So this is one of the victims that was mentioned right here. And this is when they were just looking for her. Um, Colette Anise Wilson, daughter of Dr. and Mrs. Thomas Wilson of Alvin, was last seen Thursday when an Alvin High School band director left the girl at an intersection of Highway 6 and Country Road 99. Let's see if we can find that. We might not even get to New Hampshire. No, wait. Is this? Yeah, it's Texas. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can go. Anybody can go to CrimeCon. You can go. It'd be good to meet you, Billy Boy Blue. Wow, look at all those thumbs up. Can I come and start yelling? We need some money. Billy Boy Blue. He needed the money. Oh! <laughs> yeah. So when you weren't single, you weren't able to go to CrimeCon? Jeez. That sucks. I've only been the one, so who am I to say anything? What I want to know, I want I wish this is what they do at CrimeCon. I wish they'd put it in the center of the United States somewhere. Because nobody goes to CrimeCon to go see the sights. If you do that, then you're not really there. I mean, I don't know. I don't really give a damn about going to uh, Disney World or I didn't really care about going to Bourbon Street or any of that stuff at all. Okay? Uh, it just seems like they're catering to... If you put it in the center of the United States, I think you'd have more people that would actually go to it. Because most of the people that go to that, literally you're traveling 
to get there. And a lot of people might want to make there if they were from the West Coast, you know, me. <laughs> uh, look at Sabrina. Yeah, she said, if my partner wouldn't let me go to meet Gray and my other crime vloggers, then he can stay behind. That's for Dan. That's right. Oh, yeah, right on Lumberton. How about right on that, that uh, what was the name of that street? It starts with a, yeah, hell, I thought it started with a P. Yeah, right there. Yeah, Lumberton would be fantastic. I was thinking on the on the panhandle of Oklahoma. Oh, I thought you you said you were. I thought you said uh, what did you say up there? Yeah, you said now that I'm single and free, I can achieve my goal. <laughs> That's what you said. Oh. Hey, thanks, Jim Bino. All right, so what did this say? It said, um, oh, darn it. Uh, let's see, this one arrived. County Road, so she was dropped off at intersection. This is in Alvin, Texas. Let me go there first. Jim Bino. You're the man, Gray. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Highway 6 and County Road 99. Let's find Highway 6. I think that's probably it. Well, yeah, let's see. Oh, right there. Okay. So there we... we what I like to do when I'm trying to find an intersection sometimes is I'll put a pin on one of them. Hey, good night, Sabrina Rodriguez. Will do, will do. Got some cool cases we're looking at recently. I mean, they're they're interesting. Jeez, Blue. Blue won't sleep in his bed Good anymore. Good night, Gray. Please continue the great work in finding justice for families. Well, thank you. Sabrina Rodriguez. <clears throat> Rodriguez. <laughs> you know, Blue, he won't go back into his bed anymore. Because she, it smells like... Um, Chloe. So he's kind of like, oh, I don't want to go in there. Right there, Blue, come on. And yet, he just go, looks at it and walks right by. Makes me, That does make me feel bad, though. <laughs> I think one some one day he'll, he won't care. I think it's just, it's still so early. It's only been three days, and he's probably like, I'll, I'm going to give it a month to see what happens. I mean, regardless... I wouldn't get rid of a dog if the other one just was like being snooty. Because she's a cool, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. She's awkward, running around and everything, but very quick, Chloe. All right, so that's Highway 6, and then we also needed uh, County Road 99. Let's see. So where's County Road? County Road 99. All right. So there you go. She was supposed to be dropped off right there. Yeah, let me, let me, I'm going to make a folder on this one. Why not? This could be a interesting... Yeah, Colette Anise Wilson. And what? 
what is this again? Uh, was last seen Thursday when Alvin High School band director left the girl at the intersection on Highway 6 at County Road 99. I wonder if they ever really proved that he dropped her off there. Highway 6. Let's see. Missing since about 12.30 p.m. Thursday. It's kind of a weird time of day to... It seemed like she was out of school almost. Let's see. Alvin in search of a 13-year-old girl missing since about 12.30 p.m. Thursday. Coletta Nice Wilson's daughter, Dr. and Mrs. Thomas Wilson of Alvin, was last seen Thursday when Al when an Alvin High School band director left the girl at the intersection of Highway 6 and County Road. That's a drop off by band director Alvin High School band. I think it's no, it wasn't. It was just, what was it, a high school? I can't remember now. Yeah, Alvin High School, yeah. Alvin High School Band Director. And that's at, dropped off at 12.30. Okay. So this is just the report when she was missing. This isn't, uh, they did find her. Mrs. Wilson said she arrived about 10 minutes late and the girl was gone. At about 12.30 p.m., a black old model car was seen leaving the area where the girl was uh, to have been picked up by her mother. The girl's mother said that she saw the vehicle, wow, leaving the place where her daughter always waits for her. I mean, it could or could not be uh, the person. Mrs. Wilson said the car was driven by a white male and that a dark-haired female was in the back. Well, that's interesting. Oh. Well, is her daughter... But that she was unable to tell if that was her daughter. Oh, boy. So that does sound like that's going to be her. I mean, why would... You know, if there's a, just a, a person driving a car... Normally, a person would sit in the passenger seat. She said the vehicle headed south on CR-99. Okay, so the car headed this direction. Which is kind of weird because it ends right there. Vehicle headed south on Sierra 99 toward the old Manville Road. Okay, yep, that's what that was. And this was the last time the vehicle has been seen. So she actually saw it. This is where she was supposed to be picked up. And then here's the Alvin Manville Road. And so that means the car probably made it to this area. So instead of driving probably home, the car went right in this direction. The mother saw it, dark-haired person in the back, and the mom thought it was probably her daughter. By nightfall, officers of the Sheriff Department, Rocheron, oh, let me see, where am I at here? Okay, right there. Miss Wilson was wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt, purple shorts, and a brown and brown chuka boots at the time she was last seen. Mrs. Wilson said her daughter is about 5 feet 2 inches tall, weighs about 100 pounds, and has long black or long back, uh, I think it meant to say black, it says back hair and blue eyes. By nightfall, officers of the Sheriff's Department, Rocheron 
Police Department, Perlin Police Department, Alvin Police Department, the Texas Department of Public Safety, and combined force of firemen from the same towns had set up roadblocks and were searching the area throughout the northern part of the county. At daylight today, a helicopter search crew began covering the vast open areas and rice fields in search of the missing girl. And it says it's continued on page 11. Uh, wow, there's, let's see. Is this page 11? Yeah. Anti-aging pills. <laughs> well, for Ashley Wilson, I don't think that's the same story. I don't know. It doesn't seem. Is it over here? Maybe. All right, let me get back to the here. So that was June 28, 1971. And then let's see if there's anything from like July. Here, I'm gonna, yeah, there's a lot of different notations of it in here though. November 27th. Oh, wow, was she found that much later? That's crazy, let's see. Oh boy, yeah. So she wasn't found for, gosh, five months or so. Sheriff's deputies found the badly decomposed body, well, that's a different one, Gloria Gonzalez, 19, in high grass near an almost dry reservoir Tuesday. She had been missing since October 28. While doing tests on the girl's teeth found scattered in the area, authorities discovered one of the teeth did not fis, uh, fit Miss Gonzalez's jaw. I mean, how crazy is that? You would, I mean, it's amazing that somebody even looked for something like that. You would think that they would have just went, oh, yeah, yeah, they, this is one of the teeth. Um, I think it meant to say they went back to the area Friday, less than 200 feet from where she had been found. Deputies discovered a decapitated 13-year-old girl missing since June 17th. Colette Anise Wilson was identified by her dentist father, Thomas O. Wilson, from the peace ring she wore and from the dental work he had recently done himself. There's no doubt it's her, Wilson said. She was very happy and God was beautiful. And, uh, and, and I think he was saying, and God was, was she beautiful. I guess we knew that it would probably end this way. Harris County Sheriff C.V. Kern said, we're dealing with a homicidal maniac who may or may not be the same person or persons that killed the two Galveston girls. Kern, Kern's reference was to two 15-year-old girls whose bodies were found last week floating in a bayou near Texas City. So let's see if we can figure out where, like, where this was. Okay. Almost dry. What reservoir, though? This almost seems like the same article. Okay, this is December 1st. Let's see if there's any extra in this one. Hey, thanks, Kit Kat. Only for Kit Kat purchases, rolling on the floor, laughing, hugging face. <laughs> okay, only for Kit Kat. Hacking through a jungle thick briar patch where the headless skeleton of two teenage girls were discovered last week. Law officers Tuesday found the skull of one of the victims. The latest of 
seven sex slings along the Texas Gulf Coast. The skull of Gloria Gonzalez, 19, was found 114 feet from where her body was discovered beneath tangled honeysuckle vines in the wilderness 35 miles west of Houston. Officers chopped with machetes through the brush. <laughs> sure, go ahead and buy the Kit Kats. Billy Bully Blue. He needed the money. Can I buy to Kit Kats? Hey, uh, Cairo, I didn't see it up there. <laughs> you got to get up in two hours, huh? Jesus. Officers, well, definitely they're related. Officers chopped with machetes through the brush in their search for the bodies of more possible victims. The remains of Miss Gonzalez and Colette Anise Wilson, 13, of nearby Alvin, Texas, were found in the same area of the 12,000-acre Federal Flood Control Reservation. Hmm. I wish I had a better... Uh, Sheriff C.V. Kern said Miss Gonzalez apparently was strangled and Colette was killed by a blow on the head by a blunt instrument like a hammer. Ms. Gonzalez's body was found November 24th by a treasure hunter, whatever the hell that means, and a young woman's skull was found about 45 feet away. The skull, thought by officers at the time to fit Ms. Gonzalez's remains, had been, uh, had been crushed with a hammer-like blow. After finding both skulls and comparing dental records, medical examiners said the skulls found last week belonged to Colette, and the skull found Tuesday was that of Ms. Gonzalez. Huh, that sucks. Hey, look at that. Amanda Build on Streamlabs. I'll take two Kit Kats and raise you two more. <laughs> All right. Colette disappeared last June 17th from a rural crossroads while waiting for her mother to pick her up after band practice. Deputies continued to search the thicket for clues. I mean, do you think it says in here anything about flood? What, what do they call that? Let's see. Federal Flood Control Reservation. I doubt it says anything. Let's see. No. Thanks, Jim Bino. An almost dry reservoir, but why not say where, you know? See, they, they have like four girls in, in a similar time frame. All in 1971. She's got to be related. Oh, man. Yeah, you guys keep baiting uh, Kit Kats, all right? Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 20 down on your Kit Kat. Take it or leave it. I think I can buy 20 of them. 20 though. down on Kit Kat. Take it or leave it. You know what? Let me try 1972. Yep, she's still in there. Yeah. 
Officers believe suspect jailed. Sheriff deputies who have worked the past 12 months trying to solve a string of sex murders in the Houston area think the killers are a pair of young men already in custody. Hmm. Thank you, Daddy. Not too bad. How about you? How are you doing? Dottie O. Caspian Horse. Horses rock. <laughs> Look at the, the budding ro romance between Kit Kat and Billy Boy Blue. Ah. Oh. You know, who said my channel couldn't be a love connection, huh? Oh, good. So let's see if they caught the person, and then we can look that up. Both suspects are in jail in nearby Angleton, charged with two sex slangs, and prime suspects and four others, according to investigators. They are Harry Andrew Lanham. Well, let's just do that quick. Harry Andrew Lanham. Harry... Andrew Lanham. So these are those two guys right here, look. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Kit Kat is mine. Dollar don't matter. All right. Really? What the hell are you talking about? You vowed revenge. A convicted murderer who vowed to seek revenge and kill law officers in Houston area is out of jail and may be headed back to Houston. Anthony Michael Napa. So is that the same person that's in this one? Yeah, right there. Look at it. Andrew Lanham, 22, of Fremont, Ohio, and a record driver, Anthony Michael Napa Jr., 24, of Houston, a Vietnam veteran. Lanham also is charged in Ohio with the pistol slaying of a 62-year-old grandmother, and he has admitted killing another Houston woman and dumping her body in a ditch, officers said. Lieutenant Hugh Irby and investigator Jay Evans of Harris County Sheriff's Department have hit, um, headed the year-long investigation. Officers suspect sex was the motive in all the murders. What's it saying up here? The investigation has shown the two men knew four other murdered girls or were seen at drive-ins and other places they visited. The skeletons of Colette Anise Wilson, 13, of Alvin, Texas, and Gloria Ann Gonzalez, 19. Hmm. Two, girl, two girlfriends, Debbie Ackerman and Maria Andrew Johnson, both 15, of Galveston, Texas vanished last November during a school holiday. Their bodies were were nude from the waist down and with their hands and legs tied were found several days later floating in a bayou near Texas City. Lanham is charged in Fremont, Ohio with the August 1971 pistol slaying of Dolores Foo 62. Lanham admitted killing Pamela... Uh, I don't know if it's Hoopner of Houston. Man. So let me go back to whatever that thing was we were looking at. All right, so. <clears throat> Harry Andrew Lanham.
Mm. I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get out of this. I don't even know if they actually were charged with that murder. Yeah. Well, he does. Sounds like he gives details here. Let's see. The suspect escaped in January. Let's see. But so far, we've been able to come up with only one that exactly matches one of our unsolved murders in Galveston area. In these letters to himself, he describes everything in detail, the type of panties the girl wore, where he picked them up, uh, things like that. The suspect escaped. Some of the stuff he could have gotten out of the newspapers, but some of the details were never released and he has written down, Farino said. The skeletal remains of two victims, Colette Wilson, 13, were found close together in a brush choked reservoir. He described things about the Wilson girl slang that I didn't even know about until I checked. Huh. So maybe that did solve that. Colette Anise Wilson. No, this is crazy. Confessions of a cold-blooded killer. I knew that that <laughs> that had to have been a serial killer. That situation there. So let's see what's going on. This is now. Edward Harold Bell says he has killed. Well, that doesn't sound like the right name though. Has killed as many as eleven girls, and he claims he was brainwashed to do it. Yeah, look at down here. Bell named three victims in 1971. Debbie Ackerman and Maria Johnson, 15, of Galveston surfer girls, experienced water skiers who disappeared after hitchhiking, and Colette Anise Wilson, 13, who never arrived home near Alvin after attending the summer band uh, camp. All three cases unsolved, though Brazoria County Sheriff's o officials Long theorized Wilson and another girl were murdered by a convict killed in 1972 jail escape. Wilson's bones were found in a reservoir. Okay, so they're not saying he's related to that. weird how you can just sort of go on these weird tangents out of nowhere like that you know what was weird is remember that case we th we discussed last night that was it's really recent like within the last week where she was um her van was on the highway you remember that one uh her van was on the highway and they were kind of confused at what direction she was going and it you know caused problems. Yeah, I think it was right where was that? I feel like it was up in this area here. No, right there, there it is. So it's right there on this I-95 right here. And what was weird is I was going through some random cold cases earlier. And I think it was actually Rhode Island that I was looking at. Or maybe, maybe it was, hold on, let me think. I think it was, no, it was, it was new, it was, um, New Hampshire, I think. No, I think this, this is a different one. 
there was a case where they actually had the vehicle was parked. Yeah, gosh, I feel like it was, um, had to have been this Rhode Island one. Well, it was very similar anyways. There was a van parked on the side of the road and no explanation at all and she was gone. Same highway and everything, but literally like 30 years prior. Yeah, I don't know if it was me. I don't think I had If it that. smells like cologne, leave it alone. Rolling on the floor, laughing, rose winking face with tongue. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now I wish I could find that one. Unidentified. Well, here's here's another story though. This is one in New Hampshire. Billy Boy Blue. Thank you. If she covers her face, pick up the pace, lol. Joanne Dunham of North Charleston um, was slain and, and a hunt is underway for her killer. We have concluded that this is in fact a homicide, he told Newsman. Her body was found Wednesday in a wooded area off Quaker City Road about four miles east of Route 12. She had been missing since Tuesday. Spano said the body was fully clothed. Spano said an autopsy disclosed Miss Dunham died of asphy asphyxiation. The body was found Wednesday by David Hayes, a farmer who with his dog had joined a search conducted by police and other New, New Hampshire authorities. The gr I mean, listen now. See, this is what I'm saying. There's a similarity in all of these things. A young girl left alone, and there just must be so many freaking predators out there that it just, it's mind-boggling. And there really are, if you look it up. If you type in around your area, there's they live all around everybody. So the, the, listen to this. Um, the girl was last seen waiting for a school bus at 7.15 in the morning, uh, about a half mile from her trailer home. Her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Dunham, became alarmed when she failed to return um, in the evening. Uh, they later learned that she had never arrived at her high school uh, where she was a student. So basically, she just... Did what she does every day. Got up in the morning, went to wait for a bus, and disappeared and ends up being strangled by somebody. And she was fully clothed. And this is in, this is 1968 here. And that's one of those ones you'll just never get a resolution probably. It's like, how would you, unless they, somebody was thinking back then to preserve Um, you know, preserve items. I mean, this is way back before you would even think of that. The body was jo uh, Joanne Dunham, 15, of North Charleston, reported missing. Now, it looks like this is the same article. Let me see if I can find that spot. Quaker Road. Quaker City Road. <laughs> mm, 
Maybe it's not there anymore. Hmm. Well, there's Quaker Drive. I don't know if that's the same. last seen waiting let's see they learned later that you had let me see I think I have a one more article on that one from like a month and a half later uh, the girl died of as asphyxiation the body was found in a pile of leaves and her hands were tied and her mouth was taped yeah that's just crazy yeah. Just waiting for a bus to go to school, then they find her dead, fully clothed, mouth taped, hands bound behind her. And then I think there is... So that's her right there. On June 11, 1968, at approximately 7.10 a.m., Joanne Dunham, age 15, was last seen while walking from her home at Rachey Mobile Homes in Charleston. I wonder if that's still there. I doubt it, but you just never know. No. No, that's New Hampshire, though, right? Maybe I'm in the wrong state. <laughs> Hold on a second. I was thinking that was somewhere else. Hold on. Huh. Well, maybe that would make a difference. Well, now they're called Twin Valley Estates, maybe. Yeah, that looks like that could be it. Probably changed the name. So we'll put that there. And then what was the other information? Approximately four. And then, let's see. She was en route to her bus stop on her way to school. She never got on the bus. So the even the bus that went you know, would have picked her up, says she never got on it. So that means she was abducted, you know, prior, probably just on the walk. Her body was found at approximately 4.15 p.m. the following day, so found really quick, on a roped-off road on Quaker City Road in Unity, New Hampshire. Okay. Oh, man. Very wooded. Look at that. I mean, that's just dense right there. I wonder if there's any winter months where it's not quite as... No, I guess it just looks like that. No, it doesn't look like there's even street view or anything. Man, look how dense that is. I don't think I've ever seen anything, I mean, a road in something so absolutely packed like that. An autopsy determined that she was asphyxiated. Help us solve this case and bring justice to the family. Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. I mean, but hell, 1958, that's uh, 51 years ago at this point. 
And you say that she wasn't sexually assaulted? Hmm. So how's it going, everybody? I'm just sort of off in La La Land over here doing my own thing. I mean, this is this is actually what I do when I'm getting stuff together for a show. <laughs> I mean, it takes a long time to actually work okay, through everything. Okay, Billy Boy Blue, Hickory Dickory Dock, rolling on the floor, laughing, kiss mark, winking face with tongue. Yeah, it was 68. That's what I said. 51 years ago. Who was brainwashed? Oh, earlier? Yeah. Who knows? I, I don't even think he's the killer of the one I was looking up. Didn't sound like it anyways. My Chloe's just busting around over there. Jojo, we can't do that one. Now I want to get that girl's name one more time. I'm, I mean, are they still unsolved cases? Yeah, homicidal maniac. It's this one. Okay, Colette Anise Wilson. Documentary series re-examines 70s murders of 11 girls in Galveston area. He called them the 11 who went to heaven. In a letter to prosecutors, he confessed to murdering one teenage girl after another. But was Edward Harold Bell really their killer? A six-part documentary series on A&E starting Thursday will examine the long unsolved murders of 11 young women in, in and around Galveston and Houston in the 1970s and the man who says he's responsible for them all. The chain of killings started in 1971. 13-year-old Colette Anise Wilson went to band camp and never came back. Her bones were later found in a reservoir mingled with the bones of 19-year-old Gloria Ann Gonzalez, who was reported missing by her roommate in West Houston in October 1971. The same year, two hitchhiking 15-year-old were climbing into a white van outside Baskin Robbins. Soon after, Debbie Ackerman and Maria Johnson were found in Texas City, their bodies dumped in Turner Bayou. Over the years, more teenage girls were murdered, high school kids who like surfing and water skiing, who went to driver's ed or skipped school and never returned. Their bodies turned up in creeks and bayous. Their, murder, their murders went unsolved. Time does not heal all wounds, said Dottie Walker, a Houstonian whose niece Sharon Shaw was one of the 11 murders. Not murder. It's still hell all the way to the bone. Yeah. Bell, a college-educated businessman with three kids, was also a pedophile charged with seven, uh, charged seven times for sex crimes against girls. He went to prison for shooting and killing the young ex-Marine Larry Dickens, who caught him masturbating in front of some young girls in Pasadena. Years later, Bell, already in prison, serving a 70-year sentence, 
for the shooting sent a letter to prosecutors in which he confessed to killing seven of the young women who were murdered more than two decades earlier. He blamed what he calls the, the program. He believes government agents... I'm giving you your answer now. <laughs> he believes government agents have used him as a secret murder program, brainwashing him to rape and kill young women. But when the district attorney tried to interview him, Bell wouldn't talk, and the letter got filed away in a cold case file. Then in 2005, the unsolved case of Ackerman and Johnson landed on the desk of Galveston police detective Fred Page. He teamed up with Chronicle reporter Lisa Olson, who got, in, uh, got an interview with Bell. Bell confessed again, then sent Olson's letter with details about the victims their names or the color of their hair and for some gruesome details about their killings. It was riveting, Olson recalls in Thursday's episode of the series and it made me think there was some door opening and I didn't know what was going to come out, come through the door. Huh, I kind of want to see that now. That series, maybe I'll put this on my desktop here. All right, I'll be back in a second. All right, had to let uh, Chloe outside and Blue, you know, go do their thing, whatever the hell they were doing. Yes, everybody hit that like button if you would. I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to watch this. It's called on A&E... The eleven that went to heaven. Oh, and the recording of Three Men and a Mystery went well today. I sparkling heart Gray's bedtime stories. Soothing in weird way. <laughs> well thanks, even though they're all like about crazy crap, right? Now, I guess we never made it really to the New Hampshire uh, stuff. Uh, I was going to look up. Might as well just save that for some other time.
Yeah, the the it's pretty weird. Alyssa Gomez case. I'm trying talking them into covering next season. Um, a case that I've talked about on this channel. Not the recent one, but one that we've talked about. I think it would be perfect for a podcast. Well, the new season's already started, Amanda. So we're into... Um, I think they're on episode... We're, well, I guess we're on episode three coming out on Monday. But we've recorded five. Well, thanks, JoJo. The 11 who went to heaven. Are you talking about the the third? Well, the third season's and you know would be June, but this one hasn't really. I mean, we're still in the middle of this one. We got probably only halfway. We're not even a third of the way through the actual publishing of them. There's three episodes out. We're gonna do probably ten or more. Yeah, I think he does have the video. It's probably it's just it's a podcast though, so you don't really need to watch it while we just stand around and let, sit there and stare at things. Coming up on That's right. Hey Kit Kat, Billy Boy Blue wants me to put in a good word for him. <laughs> Hey, good word. Billy Boy, he Billy Boy Blue, he's okay. He only needs the money. Oh. Hey Gray, put in a good word for me with Kit Kat. I do do uh, audio podcast, Jim Bino. That's what we're talking about. Three Men in a Mystery is a, an audio podcast. But I've actually thought of maybe trying to do some on my own and maybe even have them scripted even. You know, like have a scripted, but I read through it and then I... I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, most, most podcasts, by the way, are scripted. Even ones that you don't think are. They just kind of ad-lib a little bit. I don't know if I could totally be scripted, but because I like to think and on the fly. Get a room. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tiara going on didn't any of them go to the bathroom oh okay yeah look at look at this site in New Hampshire I was trying to I was trying to export this out into Excel, but it didn't really. And then I was going to sort it and see if there was any kind of time frame connection to some of these. But there's a lot, in, even in New Hampshire. I mean, look at all these. Arlene Clevisy, what's that one? Was found dead in a wooded area near Humebrook. On June 4th, 1972. I mean, same, you know, right around that same time. The medical examiner ruled her death as a homicide by traumatic asphyxia, including drowning. The cold case unit was unaware of this case until 2015. 
and a review and reinvestigation of the file has commenced. Well, hey, I mean, that's right around that same time where the other girl was strangled, 1971. Scroll down. So I'd like to be able to sort it. <laughs> look at that, another really good. Daniel O'Connell, age 28, of Lowell, Massachusetts, was found dead in a wooded area off of Route 106 in London, New Hampshire, on October 31st, 1971. An autopsy revealed that Daniel died as a result of a gunshot of gunshot wounds. He also suffered suffered blunt force injuries to his head and face, which contributed to his death. So I like to look through these and pick ones to that seem like there might be more to it. Ellen Wilkinson, age 39, and her husband Maurice Wilkinson, age 48, were shot to death in their home at Old Route 16 in Center, Ossipi, New Hampshire. I thought New Hampshire was like a really rich, snooty place. On August 16, 1974, maybe it wasn't, maybe it is now, but maybe it wasn't as much back then. Maurice was sitting in a chair in the living room when he was shot and Ellen was upstairs in a bed at the time of her, de of her death. Autopsies on the victims revealed that Maurice was shot one time with a 9mm weapon and Ellen was shot multiple times. Help us solve the case and bring justice to the family. That's 1974. Melody Stankowitz. On June 30, 1975, Melody Stankowitz, age 27, of Cambridge, Massachusetts, was found stabbed to death and floating in Captain's Pond in Salem, New Hampshire. Almost absolutely nothing else about it. But that name is probably the only one. So I bet you if you went to uh, newspapers.com, Put her name in there. 1975. I mean, just that alone should pull up something. Yeah. Ah, here we go. And she might be part of a serial killer. Isn't that wild? See, here's the thing. I've, I've sort of figured out that most unsolved cases like a lot of them, I mean I wouldn't say most but I'd say a lot of unsolved cases are serial killers and that's why they're serial killers they get away with it I mean look at this one Melody Stankowitz put her nine month old son David to bed I mean look how much more detail this is than this I mean that's all they had in here June 30th right, this says August third so four days later Melody Stankowitz put her nine month old son David to bed dressed up in her green hot pants and t-shirt and left her home in Cambridge an hour and a half later her boyfriend dropped her off near Boston's combat zone it was 9 45 p.m. on Friday June 27th her boyfriend did not see Melody alive again According to the police, Melody was going to work that evening as a professional prostitute, patrolling the seedy cluster of bars and clubs looking for clients. Two days later, on June 29th, a fisherman passed a small, shallow pond 30 miles north of Boston in a remote area of Salem, New, Ham uh, Salem, New Hampshire. He found a naked and mutilated body floating face down. The body was that of Melody Stankowitz. She had been stabbed more than 20 times, and according to the police, her body had been in the water for more than 24 hours. 
Melody is not the first combat zone prostitute found dead recently in Salem in the Salem area. She is the third in nine months. On December 28th, the nude body of 16-year-old Kathy Williams was found. Okay, well, let's here's here's a way to look this up. So now, since they're saying right there that there's another person named Kathy Williams, let's go ch- take a look at this list, and I'm going to type in Williams and see if her name... Uh, there's only one Williams on this sheet. And it's this one. So it's possible that they solved her case. On December 28th, the nude body of 16 year Well, let's see. Well, actually, that's in Massachusetts, so that's New Hampshire. Hold on. Let me, let me check that out. Hold on. The, the lady was from New Hampshire, but she was found in Massachusetts. No, wait, no, wait. Let me read that again. According to the police, Melody was going to work that evening as a professional prostitute. Uh, prostitute uh, brought the boy uh, Boston's combat zone. So that's in Massachusetts. It was 9.45 p.m. on Friday. According to police, Melody was going to work. Okay, so let's see. Um... Kathy Williams. A mother, a wife living in her beautiful home. This is a different one, or? And 1975. No, that's not the right one. Huh. Interesting. Anyways, on December 28th, the nude body of 16-year-old Kathy Williams was found by a state trooper in a rest area in Andover. Then on March 2nd, a man driving down Route 495 in uh, Methuen found the naked body of 22-year-old Holly Davidson beside the road. For police, the three murders have formed a macabre and baffling pattern more like a plot for Sherlock Holmes than a real inquiry. The police have launched an extensive investigation involving officers from Salem, Andover, Methuen, and Boston, as well as state police. All three girls worked from the same bars in Boston. They were killed at intervals of three months, almost to the day. Their bodies were taken to roughly the same area within a 15-mile radius of Salem and Dump. So yeah, I mean, that's going to be a, uh, let's look up this one, Holly Davidson. Now, I don't know, if again, if she's on this list. Yeah, there's no Davidson in there. So let's, uh, well, they never solved this one. So what was that? That was August 3rd. Yeah, so they're really interested in these three prostitutes that were killed. And as I've said a million times, serial killers absolutely... uh, Well, I would say that prostitutes are their main... They're almost... I mean, it's so often that prostitutes are killed by serial killers. Because their people 
that normally police won't, they don't put a lot of effort in compared to other people. What was the other one? It was Holly, like Davidson or something. Yeah, Holly Davidson. And then let's see, March 2nd, 1975. Okay, now we've got a picture of them. A pattern of combat zone prostitute murders. Well, hell, where was Bundy during this time? Those kind of look like the girls he liked. But it is chilling parallels in the murders of the first two girls, Kathy Williams and Dolly, Holly Davidson, that have particularly intrigued the police. Kathy's body had been placed by the side of the road in a rest area only 100 yards from the state police barracks in Andover. The murder or murderers had made no attempt to conceal the body, which had not been thrown from the car, but was stretched out neatly by the side of the road. Hmm. Kathy's body was naked except for a small spoon on a chain around her neck of the kind used for taking cocaine. The body was unmarked and police believe she was suffocated possibly with a pillow or a blanket. There was a small butterfly tattoo on her abdomen. Kathy was only 16. According to the Boston Vice Squad, she had been working as a full-time prostitute in Boston for about a year and only a month before her death had been picked up by the vice squad on a soliciting charge. Her case had not yet come to court. Police in Andover say the murder puzzled them. We couldn't understand why there were no marks on the body, said Sergeant Robert Parker. These girls are tough. They know how to struggle. So all three of them didn't have marks on their, or two of them didn't have marks on their body. Huh. There were no indications that Kathy had taken or been given drugs. The body of Holly Davidson was found only six miles from where Kathy's body had been deposited. Like Kathy's body, Holly's was also neatly laid out naked for a pair of pan uh, but for a pair of panties. There had been no attempt to hide the body. There were no... Um, let's see. No... External marks and Holly had also been suffocated. Furthermore, Holly had the same small butterfly tattoo on her abdomen. Well, that's now that's crazy right there because that shouldn't have anything to do with anything. I mean, <laughs> what are the odds of that? We were pretty shaken when the second body was found, said Sergeant Parker. There seemed to be a pattern forming. Yes. There it does, and uh, that this is before you guys realize the term serial killer. Holly was 22. Like Kathy, she worked the bars in the combat zone, and police say she was picked up. Uh, that she was picked up several times in 1974 for soliciting. Both girls probably had their tattoos inscribed at the same place in Rhode Island, and the police believe that the butterfly motif is a symbol of freedom breaking away from home and background. Both girls live up to their tattoos. Kathy left her home in um, Hingham, where she was 14, when she was 14. 
She moved into a flat in Boston with another prostitute, and by the time she was 15, had become well qualified in the trade. <laughs> Jeez. Holly came from a wealthy, respectable home in Needham. Her father runs a chain of dry cleaners. According to their friends, both girls were lured to the combat zone by the easy money and excitement of the high life when they soon learned that the money is tight and the happy hooker a myth. Trade has been terrible, said one of Kathy's friends from the, from the zone. You think you can earn 200 a day, but sometimes you get out with less than a, than a shop girl. I mean, 200 a day, uh, it's pretty good money back then. It'd probably be like $600 today. You, you get some real weirdos around here as well. They don't want to pay, and they beat you up. Friends, a tall blonde who works from a bar in, in the uh, something, in the what, in the according to one of her, in the according to, I don't even get what the hell they're saying there. Uh, Holly was getting rapidly disenchanted with the life in the zone. She was thinking of packing it in in a month or so, clearing out of Boston for good, getting a job or something, you know, going straight, she said. Melody's older and more experienced than other, uh, than the other two girls had worked the Boston bars for only two or three months. The Boston Vice Squad says she had worked as a prostitute previously in upstate New York. <laughs> Man, you guys are still battling back and forth. The Kit Kat Battle. JoJo versus Billy Boy Blue. And Billy, Kit I won't get between on top. Oh, kiss mark, sparkling heart cap face. <laughs> Let's see. The Boston Vice Squad says she had worked as a prostitute. This is the third person. Previously in upstate New York, she was living apart from her husband, and according to the girls in the zone, she knew the ropes. The women are as surprised as the Boston Vice Squad that Holly, Kathy, and Melody were killed in the way they were. They run their own makeshift security system to reduce the risk of one of them falling into the wrong hands. They work in pairs and only will generally tell the other where she is going with the client who who the client is and what time she would return. The other firm policy is never get into a strange car. Both Holly, Kathy, and Melody seem to have broken both rules. They were picked up on the street without apparently tipping off the other women. Each either got or was dragged into a strange car. The police have pieced together a full picture of the lifestyle of Kathy, Holly, and Melody the only link missing is where each girl went on the night she died. As one policeman said last week, I think we're going to have to wait until the pattern repeats itself again. This time, I hope the murderer makes a mistake. Yeah, well, that's kind of that thing we were talking about the other day. I mean, if he repeats and he gets caught, that means somebody else died. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Hey Jojo, I'm in if Gray is in JK. Thanks, Billy Boy Blue. That's no, different. So that's where you got to go back to the other name, which was much more uncommon. But. Anyways, wow. Let's see how you can just kind of keep traveling around to these different cases and they all lead to something else. I mean, just tonight, going over some of these 
I think he had two sets of completely different uh, serial killers. Um, just randomly, two different, you know, just looking up missing people and boom. You know, sounds like uh, there was two sets there, two different articles. But now I'm really tired. Yeah. So I think that's about it for me, everybody. I am going to pass out. <laughs> as I am very sleepy. So, thank you for all the, you know, the Kit Kat bannering back and forth, resulting in super chats. Yeah, Carol, look at the flowers. Billy Boy Blue. Billy Boy Blue did one earlier on the first live that he did earlier, the debunk. And then Carol, look at the flowers again. Thank you very much. So, and then Sabrina Rodriguez. Gray is the true crime king. I love you, Gray. Love you too, Sabrina. Freak forever. It's a pleasure to support you every month. If I was rich, I'd give your channel more money. Well, that's very kind. And then Billy Boy Blue again. Can I come in and start yelling, we need some money? And Jim Bino, you're the man, Gray. Keep it up. Thank you very much. And then uh, Sabrina Rodriguez again. Then Kit Kat said you can only use this money for purchase of a Kit Kat. Then Billy Boy Blue said, can I buy a Kit Kat? Then Jim, then Jim Beam, uh, Bino gave me another contribution with no note. Then Billy Boy Blue said, 20 down on Kit Kat. Take it or leave it. Then Dottie said, how's it going? <laughs> Thank you very much. And then uh, JoJo said, Kit Kat is mine. Dollar don't matter. Then JoJo said, if it smells like cologne, leave it alone. And Billy Boy Blue said, if she covers her face, pick up the pace. <laughs> How did I miss these things? Oh, okay, Billy Boy Blue. Hickory Dickory Doc. That's right. <laughs> JoJo, we, we can do that one. Oh, boy. Uh, maybe I won't read these anymore, but hey, Gray, uh, put in a good word for me, blah, 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 blah. All right, yeah. <laughs> you guys are nuts, all right? That's all there is to it. <laughs> Jesus, I can't even read these things. They're <laughs> I didn't realize you guys were going down like uh, some crazy store, uh, path there. Hey, thanks, Jim Bino. Ding. Gray or yeah. the Daddy podcast rolling on the floor laughing. Normally, I don't actually read those, Amanda. I, I don't know why I just started reading them tonight. So I'm going to go back to just thanking the names. All right. Oh, and then also, uh, oh, look at that. Good old Chloe, usurping the bed again. Yep. I mean, she really is almost about the cutest dog you could ever... And thank you, Amanda Belg, on the Stream Labs. Thank you very much. PayPal. And by the way, my Blazers got smoked. I think the Lakers are going to win the whole damn thing. They're, they're just too good. Or, or we're just that shitty. All right, so, hey, where do you guys, guys want to do the flyby tonight? 
No, I gotta open up Google Earth. I shut it down on accident. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Back to you, Jim. Okay, we can go back to Yosemite.
Hey, thanks, Lanky Tour. Lanky Tour. The Legend. I do have Chloe right here, though. She just sort of jumped up here. and Well, she didn't actually jump up, but look at that. I mean, come on. <laughs> Tell me she isn't the cutest. Oh, look at She kind of looks like me a little bit. Look at that. Not the cute part, but the, the white beard. Right, Chloe? Come on. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, they'll be going to bed soon. All right, everybody, thank you all for showing up tonight and contributing, helping out the channel and everything. Uh, kind of a busy day, a couple different lives. Um, tonight's show was just kind of going over cold cases and wherever that might lead. All right, everybody, so thank you for showing up tonight. And as I always say, until next time.